Hey, I'm so glad you joined me today. And if you watch me very much, you know I love having guests on my show. So allow me to introduce you to my friend, Ruth. Hi, everybody. Ruth has celiac disease and she's always working on new recipes that she can eat that's healthy, that's gluten free, and you're also dairy free, right? Yes, I am, I am. What are you gonna teach me how to make today, Ruth? Well, Miss Ginger Optimist, I have a recipe for gluten free almond crackers that I find very tasty. You know what, they really are, because she gave me some and I was like, <laughs> oh, can we make these? <laughs> And you said yes. So yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. So let's do it. All right. We have some almond flour. Now, as I'm dumping the um, ingredients in, I will name what they are. I've got some olive oil, cold water. This is nutritional yeast. Egg whites. Uh, we have some baking soda. And last but not least, pink Himalayan salt. I've actually found that the best way to mix this is with a spoon. And of course we always wash our hands before we cook, but um, use a lot of hand work with this as well. And if you've had any experience with gluten-free flours, some of them can be a little testy. So, um, this one sometimes is as well. I don't know if you can see it here. It's still pretty dry, but it's getting moist enough to form into a ball. Voila! <laughs> okay. Do you feel like a doctor? <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Ningún problema. No. Gracias. Okay. So we don't want to waste any of this yummy concoction. And typically you can get about three dozen crackers out of this one batch, which I find great. Because some recipes, you know, only make like a dozen or something. I made a recipe this morning that only made um, the one batch, but these are no oats. Oatmeal cookies. Ooh, can I try one? Please do. And they are also gluten free and dairy free. I never make anything that's not. Mm. What do you think? Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to Yum. tell you about that one another time. Okay, we have a nice dough ball. Ooh, you did. Dough ball fight? <laughs> not today. <laughs> okay. There. And then, see it's just a nice ball. We're going to take a tray with parchment paper. Get out two sheets, okay? Because what we're going to do is put one there, put another sheet over it, rolling pin, and I found that you kind of have to Push it down a little bit before you can actually roll it, but, okay. Let's see here. And you can make these as thick or as thin as you want them, but if you want them to be soft, you want to leave them a little thicker, maybe a quarter of an inch. If you want them to be more crunchy, then of course you want to go thinner. I like crunchy. Then let's go thinner. Yay! <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Well, actually, I think that's pretty good. Would you like to cut them? Sure. Okay. I'm going to use a pizza cutter. If you don't own one, you can certainly use a knife, but we're just going to slice them however big you want them. You could make them like graham cracker size or like little bite size. I like them bite size myself. But... Good, because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's great that we can taper this to our own desires. You can take the raggedy um, outside edges and um, re-roll them, or you can just cook them as they are. You don't have to do this, but I like to put just a little notch in them. I don't know, 
just it looks pretty which speaking of you can also use if you have a fluted cutter then it makes a, a, like a crimpy edge if you want to make them fancy and you know for a party or something like that we just put them onto our cookie sheet and if we can we'll separate them just a tad use your metal spatula and if they stick just kind of shake them off a little bit, but um, if they don't want to separate, that's okay too. But I try to separate them so that the edges can get nice and crispy. That's the way they're really yummy. Okay. These are so delicious to eat plain or with lots of different toppings. You try what's favorite for you. Let's put them in the oven for 10 minutes and we'll be right back. The timer's going off, so let's check our crackers. Let's check and see. Well, they're looking amazing. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if they're as crispy. Let's see. Do we want to put them in for a few minutes? I think maybe, should we flip them over and give them one more minute? Um, you know, another. you can do that or you can turn the tray around. All right, so they've been in there for another minute. Ooh, hot, hot. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. ooh, my. Ooh. Mmm. Yummy. You hear the crunch? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feeling and hearing. <laughs> so we've decided on peanut butter and honey for our crackers. Mm. And because my friend is uh, gluten-free and dairy-free, we just want to be totally safe. So we're using PB Fit and mixing it with a little honey. So, shall we give it a try? We shall. Whoop. Let's see. Let me take this guy and put some on him. And I'll let you get your own there. Mmm. Oh. Yum. And with the peanut butter and the almond flour, it makes a complete protein. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try mine. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. la la. <laughs> Have fun picking your toppings because the sky's the limit. Yum. Mm. Or eat them plain. Mm. I would love to connect with you. Please leave me comments down below and make suggestions of videos you'd like to see me make with the Instant Pot sous vide or with maybe Ruth again and where we can make some more gluten-free, dairy-free items. Thank you so much for watching The Ginger Optimist. If you enjoyed this video, show me some love by hitting that like button. And if you're not following me already, I hope you will. Have a great rest of your day, my friend, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye. Bye.